बिस्मिल्लाम फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक दिस इज डॉक्टर आबिद अली सरगानी फ्रेंड्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज हेमरेजिक सेप्टीसीमिया आल्सो नोन एज दी शिपिंग फीवर इन केटल सो लेट्स डिस्कस दैट वाट इज द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस डिजीज एंड वाट आर द क्लिनिकल साइंस डायग्नोसिस एंड इट्स various aspects this is a very important and uh, devastating disease commercially as well as from the medical point of view so at the end of this lecture you will be able to learn about introduction that what is hemorrhagic septicemia etiological agent of the this disease and epidemiology predisposing factors which favors the occurrence of this disease are the outbreaks and pathogenesis of the pathogenic organism clinical signs diagnosis lesions of the and possible treatment and the prevention of the disease so in introduction hemorrhagic septicemia is an acute it means that it is severe or per acute or highly severe and highly fatal bacterial disease affecting the cattle and buffaloes especially water buffaloes primarily these are these are considered as the primary host of the pathogenic organism other susceptible hosts from which that organism has been isolated includes pigs horses sheep and goat and other donkeys etc now the etiology or the causative agent of this disease is bacteria that is known as pasturella multocida there are various serotypes of the pasturella multocida multocida which causing the disease especially specifically serotype b2 and e2 have been identified as most, most pathogenic for the animals this is a gram negative organism now if we talk about the epidemiology of the disease so this disease is wide spread especially cases are found in asia african countries and middle east countries somehow sporadic cases has also been reported from the southern europe while that the highest incidence is occurs in the southeast asia transmission of the disease occurs through the routes of ingestion it means contaminated feed and water can transmit this disease and inhalation means nasal discharges and the inhalation of the organisms may also be the transmission route for that organism and localization at the tonsillar regions and oropharynx regions may also be responsible to cont contaminate the various fomites and objects at where the animal is licking now the predisposing factors predisposing factors are also known as the risk factors which favors this disease common stressors associated with the outbreaks of hemorrhagic septicemia includes high temperature and humidity concurrent infection with other diseases just like blood parasites or foot and mouth disease poor nutrition or work stress may favors the occurrence of this disease while this disease is most prevalent during the rainy season due to prolonged activation of pathogen in moist environment pathogenesis of the disease how this why uh, this bacteria uh, alters the physiological mechanism of the animals first of all through the environments it is brought into the terminal bronchioles and alveoli which changes the lungs and causing the destruction of the macrophages and wbcs and there is also release of the histamines and the pgf2 alpha in that case it leads to the septicemia means presence of the organism into the blood and inflammatory changes in lung parent parenchyma it may be result of the fibrosis of the lungs which causing the pneumonia later on 
and secondary invasion of the viruses and bacteria may result in the death due to asphyxia as there occurs the fibrosis of the lung tissues though there's lack of the oxygen asphyxia can be defined as a condition arising when the body is deprived of the oxygen causing unconsciousness and finally death simple term for asphyxia is suffocation now the clinical signs of the disease clinical signs appears 1 to 3 days after the infection and death may occur within 8 to 24 hours after the first clinical signs develop fever may reach up to the 106 to 107 degree fahrenheit while animal may be depressed excessive salivation or profuse salivation and nasal discharges perilaryngeal peri swelling which tend to spread down to the brisket area may also be seen edematous swelling in thorax and brisket region lesions of the disease in case if animal is died from the per acute case of the disease it includes the distension of muscles and tissues with clear straw colored serous fluid may be found in dead animal there may be the congestion or the edema of the lungs swelling and hemorrhages of the pharyngeal and cervical lymph nodes is a pro prominent feature of this disease hemorrhagic septicemia that's why we call it hemorrhagic septicemia due to hemorrhages other lesions includes the characteristic lesion of hemorrhagic septicemia is swelling of the subcutis and muscle of the submedullary region neck and brisket by clear to bullet tinged edema fluid may be found serous to serous fibrinous fluid may also be present in the thorax pericardium and abdominal cavity there is typically widespread congestion with petechiae and ecchymosis in tissues and on serosal surfaces particularly in the respiratory gastrointestinal and urinary tracts are the systems pulmonary congestion and edema sometimes with interstitial pneumonia and gastroenteritis may occur in some cases gastroenteritis refers to the inflammation of the stomach and intestine now the diagnosis of the disease you may diagnose this disease through the blood smear for bacterial visualization or the clinical signs and history of the disease blood in field condition otherwise these are uh, these tests are used for the laboratory diagnosis or the definitive diagnosis blood and edematous fluids should be taken for the bacterial isolation and collect the lymph nodes lungs and spleen if animal has been died recently now the differential diagnosis this can be mis this may be confused with other di diseases just like anthrax black water disease and plant poisoning so the diagnosis should be proper and treatment should be followed accordingly now the treatment and prevention of the disease as usual there's laser are the least chances of the survival of the animal after the long time clinical signs appearance as that this is the acute and per acute disease instead of that if early signs are found then antimicrobial microbials may be administered and anti inflammatory drugs are preferred like dexamethasone and supportive therapy is essential to prevent from the secondary invasions or the Uh, complications of the disease and vaccination is a very preventive measure for this disease now what are the antimicrobials most effective against this pathogen includes the sulfonamides tetracyclines penicillin gentamicin kanamycin ceftriaxel enterofloxacin tilmicosin and chloramphenicol have been used effectively to treat the hemorrhagic septicemia at early stage of the disease you may also use these uh, some of the antibiotics or antibacterial anti drugs intravenously if outbreak occurs however plasmid and chromosomal mediated multi drug resistance seems to be increasing for some strains of the pasteurella multicida 
and resistant to the tetracycline and penicillin has been reported for the serotype B2. B2. So if this organism has been uh, showed that B2 is existed then tetracycline and penicillin may be avoided. Vaccination of the organisms or animals against this pathogen. There are killed vaccines available most commonly used for the prevention. It includes the Bactrin's alum precipitated and aluminum hydroxide gel vaccines and oil adjuvant vaccines available for the prevention or the control of or prevention of this disease. In patients less than three years of old, an initial two doses are recommended and one to one at the one to three months apart and followed by the booster vaccination once or twice yearly. Attenuated are the modified live vaccines have been used with some some of the success otherwise they may also cause the sporadic diseases but they are not usually preferred. Now the failure of the vaccination to control the hemorrhagic septicemia is common due to inadequate vaccine coverage less than 70% mostly due to variable management systems that make annual vaccination difficult. Today's lecture was all about that so hopefully you will learn from this lecture and thank you very much for your precious time and if you have any query about regarding this uh, topic you may ask in comment box thank you very much